Okay, so uh, get your rope ropes, sit in the car, then the car is uh, completely off. So you have the main switch off, and then you have the left switch, which is the, well, let's say, the, the second power source, also off on P0. And then uh, you switch the car, the main switch on, then you have, you have to you switch the second switch to P position 1, which is like a half the car is all live apart from the battery. The battery is not sending the power to the motor yet. So you go to P1, then you have to wait for all the systems to initialize and talk to each other. Then you go to P2, and then when you go to P2, then you can uh, basically then the car is running. Uh, so if you press the throttle, you see the motor running false because it will be in neutral. Then uh, to engage first, you have to press the brake to a certain pressure. Then you pull the pedal. And it goes to first. There's no clutch, so the, the car stays in first, stopped. And then, when it's in first, everything engaged. As soon as you press the throttle, the car will move. Well, then, when you stop at the grid, you stay in P1. Uh, but basically, if, if they push the car to the grid, you go back to the same procedure. But when you go, you do the, op the opening lap, you stop, you don't touch the gear, you don't touch the, the, you leave everything on because there is no overheating. It's not like a normal. Uh, combustion engine that if it's running for too long the car overheats you can stay there for whatever half an hour so you stay in first gear you stay normal then uh, depending if the track goes up or go down you have to put a little bit of pressure for the on the brakes for the car not to roll out of position uh, then you stay there at uh, zero percent throttle when the light goes off you just go as quick as you can uh, flat out there is very little wheel spin because we're limited to the race mode power, not the qualifying. With qualifying power, we'll have much more speed. And then you go, and then you shift when the lights, by the time you see the light, at a certain point, you shift. You could eventually over-rev it. Uh, the rev is around 18,000 on this motor. You could eventually over-rev on the downshift, but the computer doesn't allow you to. It's like a normal road car, but even in, there is no, there is like the normal combustion engine, there is a limiter, which is not, in a conventional engine, is an electrical cut. In this case, it's just a cut of current. So the engine goes to 18,000 and stops there. Uh, when you're fighting someone, then the, the, there is no much difference in performance uh, because of the lower arrow, but you can really feel the, uh, the slipstream on the straight, yeah, even because, because the car has low drag, uh, especially because of these uh, weird things over the front wheel, uh, the front panels. But when you are in the slipstream, you can really feel because the power in the race is limited to around 200 horsepower, so you can really feel the slipstream and help you to overtake. And if you're not overtaking, the other thing you can do, you can start uh, putting less power or lifting more and saving energy behind another car. Because the race is quite short for each tire, it's almost like a stint of uh, maybe 10, 12, 13 laps uh, with the tire. So tire, you're not very concerned about tire management, you just go as fast as you can. But the important part uh, in the Formula E is the limited amount of battery. So the, limited, the limitation on the battery side is that you have 28 kilowatt hour per car, so per battery, and you can use it as you wish in the race. So you have to make sure that, for example, if the race is uh, 14 laps, uh, it's 2 kilowatt hour per lap, so you reach 28. So if in the beginning of the race you're, you're using 2.1, 2.2, and you can see that on the dash, you know that at one point you're going to have to spend 1.8, 1.9, so you can finish your 14 laps. Um, but then there is a safety car that could come in, there are other things to fight for positions of overtaking someone. Maybe it's better you, you spend a little bit more energy at one point, and then you save energy in a second point. Saving energy, basically, you have, you have a, on, the, on, the, on the steering, you have uh, six positions of engine power from 100 kilowatts to 200 kilowatts. In the race, you are limited at the moment at 150. Uh, so you can go 150, 140, 130, you can switch down the engine power, so you save energy. Donington is around uh, one to two tenths per kilowatt. So if you imagine that you go from qualifying mode, which is 200 kilowatts to 150, which is the race mode, uh, it's around five seconds. You can set your strategy, maybe you do a little bit shorter with one car, a little bit longer with the second car. Uh, then it's up to the driver to really uh, realize how to, how to do that. Second, you have also the regen pedal, 
and you have the regen on the brake. So how you set also, you have two different settings on the steering wheel, which you can change during the race to have more regen or less regen on the regen pedal. So that means that if you regen the energy, so the energy goes from the braking to the energy, to the battery back, it means that you can use this energy later on into acceleration. So the more you regenerate energy, the better it is for uh, your lap time. Basically with the regen you can get up to around 10% of energy back. So if you think about uh, 28 kilowatt hour, you can get maybe 3 kilowatt hour back, which means that you have 3 kilowatt hour, even an extra lap in 12 laps or, or more of energy. So this is a big difference of not using the regen and using the full regen. Basically when um, while braking, you can put a, it's like a clutch pedal and the steering is like a, like a handle, small handle switch that you pull and, you, and the energy generates a negative torque and it actually physically breaks the car more with the rear wheels. In a, in a normal conventional engine, it's like a, down, it's like a down shifting. You, you feel the engine braking. It's the same feeling that the, the car is draggy, but this drag of the engine produces an electrical current. So it charges the battery up. Qualifying is basically flat out, but yeah. in the race you have a lot to think about uh, how to save energy, where to use it, how much, what's the power output, can I do it 150, 140, should I go back to 130 and so on. Van Boost gives a 30 kilowatt power, more for 5 seconds. So it, it will be 30 kilowatt if you think about it, it's a good, uh, it's a good boost for overtaking. And then uh, you can really overtake somebody in front or defend or do a quick lap. Well, then uh, you have the pit stop, which is very different because it's a, uh, the, the driver changes car. So uh, you need a lot of support from your team. So for the pit stop, you just switch on the pit limiter, goes into the garage, park the car, jump out, take the radio out, take the steering out, and then you jump into another car, gives the belt to the mechanics, the mechanics put you the belt because you cannot really see with the helmet on. The mechanics put the belt, you put the steering wheel back, uh, yeah, and then off you go. There is, a, there is always a difference between cars, a small differences. So uh, you try to get everything as equal, but sometimes is you can, if you know that one car is a bit different from the other, you can even use it as a strategy. So you use one car in the beginning, one car with more new, with the newer tires in the second part or in the first part. Uh, it's up to you to decide. The, the amount of energy calculated by the motor is until the finish line. So as soon as you finish, you can just go. You just yeah, you just go slow, maybe five, six seconds or lap slow, but then you can change the setup as you wish. Uh, so if the car is not handling correct, uh, understeer or oversteer the basics of a racing car, you can change camber. Uh, it's like Formula 3 levels or even if you think about the currently F1 levels, I mean, it's more or less what you change. anti roll bars, springs, uh, ride heights, try to optimize downforce, uh, that, that's pretty much what you do. In a race situation, it's maybe 20% setup, 80% battery management. So battery has a much bigger effect. So I think people will focus all the effort more in the battery. We'll have a setup which is drivable and then focusing, focus the, on, the, on the battery.